Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. So you'll notice actually even Muslim cemeteries cannot be an entire cemetery. So there's one cemetery here is called Firdos, uh, Frederick. It's the entire cemetery is actually Muslim cemetery. It's all Muslim, right? I'll never forget we buried the first person there. Subhanallah, the person who helped acquire that cemetery and found the masjid was the first person to be buried in. It's amazing how it happened. I had to get special permission to bury him because it wasn't ready. I'll never forget it, subhanAllah. And now thousands are buried in it. But you'll see like here, the one Mount Lebanon on Adelphi. I don't know why I'm pointing there. Don't ask me. It's somewhere around us. It's, you know where, Mount, you know where that, that is? It's not a Muslim cemetery, but it has what? Ex lots. It is not just a single lot. No, no, entire sections. That's okay. And it could be the vice versa. Like, you know, they have land, but they have lots or sections for Sinan Muslims. So it's segmented. Yeah, that's fine. Okay? So just make sure that you, like, if you need to write it in your will, write it in your will. Unless, you know, your family, they know what they're doing. They're, that's not going to be an issue. Okay, so the person is taken to the cemetery. This is it. This is to go six feet under, over, stories over, your journey is over. This is it. You and I will be carried there. And it's the most scary thing for people. It's like, oh, I'm going to be there in the hole, right? Yeah, that's that's the, the gate. But it's not what you see physically. There's another dimension that the soul is dwelling in without you knowing. We're going to talk about it next time, inshallah. Got it? So you arrive there. So what happens? Of course, you know, I'll get to those questions later. Oh, can, you know, who can go? Who cannot go? Everybody can go. Everybody can go, right? Male, female, whoever feels comfortable to go should go unless it really affects them. No wailing. People shouldn't be allowed. Should, people should be really like in a reverent state. Reverent state. Not talking business, not talking about, not laughing. This is a serious, sobering moment. And it has to be utmost respect for the soul. This is not also about people showing up to say, I'm the one who know what to do. Wallahi. Brothers and sisters, I've seen the most egregious violations of families of the deceased by unfortunately many of our people in masjids. I want to show up to tell the family what to do, what not to do. Everybody wants to be the hero who somehow wants to lead the funeral and the burial. <sighs> Ugly scenes that I've seen. Ugly scenes. Subhanallah, that's, it's, it's, uh, Alhamdulillah, so some masjids have codified it. There are people in charge. They literally just have to say to people, everybody, shh, you follow what we do. That's what we need. Because it's not up to people to do what they want in that scene. And it's really disrespectful. Um, so, you know, they bring the car, you know, it's, it's just, they, they park it. People rush, to, of course, to carry the box. You know why? Because it's also an, a virtuous act. And there's a way to carry that, like, you know, the corners of the box on the shoulders. And they take it close to the grave. People gather around this. Again, it should be sobering. It should be reverent moment. And now the part about how to bury them. By that time, this, the hole is dug up. Got it? So it's already been prepared. By the way, in Islam, it respects the different localities and the regulations in them. So in America, the way we bury is not like overseas because they have specific regulations, even state to state. It's so like in Maryland at least, you're going to see a hole vertical with a concrete encasing, like a box, concrete box in the, in the grave because they don't want the body to, you know, whatever, when it, it disintegrates to go into the soil. Got it? So overseas, you don't see that. Just, it's either what's called shaq or lahd. So there's, you can duck, dig it vertically. It's a hole, you put the body in it. Or is there something called lahd? Vertical hole. And then on the side of wall, you dig another hole. And you place the body there. Make sense? Like, got it? These, these are just types of graves. It's okay. Both are valid and legitimate. So that's already prepared. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you have to go by the regulations. It depends on the state. I don't know other states. I know Maryland because I bear a lot of people here. It's always a concrete encasing. I think I've seen it in other places where it's not. Like others, I might have. I think I could swear. 
that I've seen it without that, but in other states. Just a regular hole, you just put the body in it. Yeah. Or no, no, with a box inside. Okay. So you either put the box inside, depending on the state by itself, in the in the in the in the grave, or in this case, we're gonna take the body out of the box, put it in the concrete encasing. Make sense? Yeah. So it's not up to you, by the way. In either case, the body is not touching the dirt. No, it is. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now. So what happened? So the, the grave is dug up. In at least here in Maryland, there is a concrete box inside, and you fill it with sand. So the, the, the ground of it is not just concrete, you put sand on it. You don't lay the body by itself, you gotta put at least a layer. So that it's touched by earth from all over. Make sense? That's what you do. And you fill it actually with sand before you, well actually you don't fill it entirely, but you put some and then you close it. But you have to be, yeah, the, the body should be touching some, some of the earth. So, but that's how it is. It's you don't have to. It's not like a requirement, but I'm just saying it's it's best. But again, you go by the regulations. Also covered from the top. Yes, yes, it's covered, and then you put the you fill it up when you cover it. So, so it's open now. At that time, so you're gonna have some people who go into the into the actual uh, grave to position the body. Usually, it's family. So male members of the family that are especially for women, you need to have mahrams because you don't want people touching the body that are not. I mean, we're protective of the body and, and the person so much. Imagine, remember the wudu, uh, the washing? Cover the private parts. You cannot just have anybody washing. You can have people who are honorable, people of integrity, right? You don't talk about them, especially if they're known. Say, oh, by the way, Abdullah was like, oh, you should have seen his body. <laughs> That's haram. It's like big haram, right? You can't talk about that. Unless it's an unknown person, you can talk about the experience. That's different. Make sense? So, but it's all to protect and conceal their 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 any flaw in them. So here, so usually two, three people go in. Son, father, mother, and no, not mothers, brother, friend, right? Depending male or female, right? Meaning the deceased. And then they take the body out of the box and they hand it to them with dua. Of course, it's not required, but it's good to make dua. Bismillah. Rasulullah. They make a lot of good dua when they're handing because it's a sacred moment. And usually it's taken into the grave from the position of the feet, where the feet lie. So the head is goes in first. You hand them, literally multiple people have to be carrying the body in the cover, in the shroud. Hand them. To the people inside. Hopefully there's one person in charge. <laughs> That's what everybody wants to be in charge, right? Outside directing everything. Makes sense. Usually it's an imam or a person aside from the masjid. And it's a sad moment. You, I'm sure you've been at those scenes before. So they take the body, and literally place it in the in the grave, in the concrete thing, if it's in Maryland, otherwise, you know, um, but it's literally they're holding the actual body. And they put it in, and the way it's placed is interesting. So they remember when I said to you, the grave is, how is it dug up? What direction? Perpendicular, yeah, exactly. So horizontally this way, the bo so the body is lying, lying um, horizontally like this, and it's vertical to the Qibla. Make sense? Vertical to the Qibla. So it's horizontal, like this. Where the Qibla is, it's position of so Qibla is here, we have to have it this way. So the body is lying positioning position towards the Qibla. And then they place the body in that, you know, um, in the grave with, it's like, you gotta put the, the the body close to the wall, one of the, like the wall furthest from the Qibla and tilt it a little bit, raise it and put, they put like a stone underneath to tilt it so that it's literally like facing the Qibla. Make sense? But the head is facing the Qibla this way. So if it's lying on the, the back, it's not facing the Qibla. So they tilt it a little bit with a stone underneath it or some some sand to elevate it a little bit so that it's like like raised up a little bit from this side. Make sense? And with head towards the Qibla. How beautiful. You're going to depart in that position with a wudu and a shroud and perfume. And then from that, people, subhanAllah, you can see it depending on the 
they would be shedding tears over there. If it's a mother, if it's a father, if it's a friend. Uh, and they'd get out. And then they come and close the, the concrete box. Then they'll fill it up with sand, the, the entirety of the grave. Just fill it. And then people are invited to do something that was really a good act to participate in filling it with sand. So you throw three handfuls of sand. So they invite people. When it, you know, they can come. You can have multiple people doing it at the same time. So like you grab a little bit of sand, you throw it twice, three times with a dua, right? With a dua. There's, you know, there's no, there's one dua. I just don't have time to go over it. But that's a sacred act you can do. Uh, and then afterward, you have to wrap up. It's uh, two minutes until Adan. Um, people now, they, they close the grave completely after that. And um, then they gather around to make dua. Rasul Sassim said specifically, make dua for your brother or your sister right now. They're being asked, which we'll talk about next time. They're being asked what? That's a side you don't see. The greatest thing. So you made dua for them in the salah. You made dua throughout, and now you're going to make dua in the most sacred moment. Don't leave right away. Stay around and make dua. Now, of course, People can make individual du'as. You can make a group du'a. It's all okay. Some people say, no, you cannot make group du'a. Again, it's an egregious thing to say you cannot do something, right? Because oftentimes people do not know how to make du'a. So somebody can be leading the du'a. It's perfectly okay. Quran can be read. Absolutely. Great thing to do. But usually a reminder, word to remind people, because oftentimes people do not know what these things mean. To make them to provide them solace, comfort. So usually when I do it, like I'll give a few words to just kind of remind people what, what this journey is about. You know, give them glad tidings about the soul. Because of their presence, that soul is giving glad tidings. And then we make a dua, make dua, they say I mean, and then that's it. Family should stay around a little bit, read Quran, make dua for them. That's really the end of it. But on that I wanted to say finally. Um Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the first, look at this, the first reward for the deceased. Upon that, when they depart and you and you and you uh, wrap up the funeral, for the deceased, the first reward is actually interest, not for them. Is that the people showing up for them will be forgiven. So like you say, wait a minute, what about them? No, no, that's a nobility for them. Because of them, you're forgiven. What do you think they'll get? Forgiveness. Look at this. The first, the first reward for the deceased, when you have people coming to their funeral, is that those showing up for the funeral will be forgiven. What a beautiful thing. But then Rasulullah said in a hadith, if a person dies, a Muslim dies, and three rows of people show up for their funeral. And by the way, they didn't define how long the row is. It's really, just show up. He says, wajibat lahu jannah. Jannah is mandated for that person. Wow. He didn't say what they've done, didn't do. You show up for these people, Jannah is written for that person. And for you, complete forgiveness. Wow. Just for that act. Look at how generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. That's the most beautiful thing. I wanted to end up on that, inshallah, so we can do the salah. Uh, actually, we'll do Adam. I need somebody to do Adam right away. But then we'll have five minutes. We can come back, wrap up loose ends and questions, inshallah. Okay, let's inshallah do the adab. Time is it's time, right? Okay. Four thing. All right. Bismillah, Rahim, Alhamdulillah. Salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. One second, inshallah. How do I? Okay. Um. So. This is first couple of words. This is the this is the end, brothers and sisters. This is our entire existence. Our whole journey culminates in this moment. You and I will be one time we'll catch our last breath, experience the last heartbeat. You know it's over. You're not coming back. Your soul is gonna depart. You'll see it, you'll feel it, you'll experience it. And we'll talk about that intoxicated moment more. And People are looking at you from the outside and they're also seeing you pass. They'll try to resuscitate you, but 
There's no going back. When it's meant to happen, it's over. Going to be buried, going to be washed first. You're motionless. You cannot move a, a muscle. You cannot say a word. You cannot do any more acts. You cannot pray. You cannot make wudu. You cannot say anything. It's over. That's it. And you're going to be shrouded. And you're going to be prayed on. Hopefully enough people show up of heart, of soul. And make sincere dua for you and me. And you're going to be carried into a grave by yourself. Six feet under. And they're going to close it on you. And you're going to fill it with sand. And they're going to leave you. <laughs> That's it. Over. You're with Allah. Can you imagine? So just think about it. This is the end of my journey. And my life is taking... It's amazing. Every single one of us is going to experience it. Oh, I just found my face like, whoa, this is real stuff. Okay. And as soon as it comes, you see the next world. Like it's not, it's like we're veiled from it, right? Right now there's a veil shielding us from seeing, preventing us from seeing the other dimension. It's there. And as soon as you take your last breath, veil is removed. And you're in the next world. Right away. You see angels right away. We'll talk about it. But I want you to really think about it. Next time, Shalom, before we talk about the journey of the soul, we're going to talk about the good ending. It's very important. Because we're still talking about the physical aspects of the journey. And we're going to talk about the... what? How do I end my life in a beautiful way? Because what matters the most is how it ends. But also beginnings are manifestations of the end. So it's like, but it's going to be a reflection of how you live your life. But we'll talk about that, inshallah. Because you, what you want is a beautiful ending. So asking for a beautiful ending to your life is essential. And for others. But Allah tells us, look forward to that moment. Because again, whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. This is not a doom and gloom for the believer. This is a beautiful journey back. Beautiful journey back. And Rasulullah says, think well of Allah before you die. Don't you die, he says. Don't you let anybody die. Don't you die without thinking well of Allah. Don't you think, oh, I'm doomed. No, no, no. Think well no matter your condition. Say, Allah is merciful. Think well of him. This is the, 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 the command of Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Again, this is a, and we'll talk about it. This is something to look forward to and actually rejoice over. If we're, inshallah, preparing and really it means something to us. Finally, like, and we spoke of the rites. Please, from now on, when you can, show up to funeral prayers. Show up with a sense of gratitude. Show up with sincere du'as and recognize Allah will return the favor when you need it, when I need it. Um, one of the key questions that comes up, again, you'll see some differences of opinion, but it's, alhamdulillah, it's like, our tradition is clear about these things. What do you do for the deceased? You make dar for them, but then they're gone. So they cannot work for themselves anymore. What can you do for them? Yeah, one of the most is you know clear things you can do for them. You make sadaqa for them. By the way, if I made if I donated a buck, one dollar, doesn't matter the amount, or a thousand dollars on their behalf, do you not get a reward? How do you think Allah will deal with you? Of course, you're getting the reward. You're getting now like more actually because you're doing it for somebody else. So they'll get reward for it, and you'll get reward for it. What else? How do you get reward for you? How do you donate on someone else's behalf? How does that intention? I'm intending. Allah cares for your intention so much. That's that's Allah's generosity. Because some people will say, "Well, the verse says you cannot do something on somebody else's behalf." No, you can. But Rasulullah Sallallahu was very explicit. If somebody didn't, let's say, fast. They had 20 days left. They didn't fast them. Can you fast on their behalf? Somebody asked Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, can I, can I fast on behalf of, I forgot, her mother or her father? I think it was her mother. He says, don't you see that if they had debt financial, would you pay it on their behalf? They said, yeah. He said, it's a debt. Go pay it on their behalf. Fasting. So not Salah is not, but fasting is. And Hajj. Got it? So it's that shows you, of course you can do it on their behalf. Because Allah's generous. He wants us to, like, we can lift each other. Wallah, it's amazing. Somebody's not doing, I'll, I'll do it on your behalf. 
And I'll talk talk to you about, I'll share stories next time that illustrate this from our tradition. Because Allah wants us to care for each other. So look at this. You can make salakah on their behalf. Umrah on their behalf. Hajj. And you're getting the reward, by the way. You're getting the reward of these things. It's not diminishing from your reward. You can read Quran for them. So I'm reading Oh, any or completing the Quran. It doesn't matter. Even a verse, a word. Say Allah in your heart. I intend for them the reward as well. I want you to reward them for re-reading this letter. And Allah will give you a reward, He'll give them reward. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if we start actually doing this for each other already now? By the way, they, can, they don't have to be dead. They can be also alive. I want you, Allah, give them the reward of this. By name, like Allah. And you're thinking about them, Allah will give them the reward of you. Reading Quran, Sadaqah, Hajj, Umrah. Yes, the reward, they can get it, even if they're alive. What else can you do? Any, any virtuous act. You can you can intend for them to get their reward of it. Don't limit it. One of the most beautiful things you can do for a deceased person. And they'll receive the blessings of this. Does that answer the question, inshallah? Got it? One of the questions that comes up. Anything else? It's almost 7.15. Even online, any questions? So next time we'll talk about the, the good ending, what it means, definition of a good ending, what Rasulullah said about it, signs of a good ending, how to acquire a good ending, right? And then we'll set into the, the parallel part of the journey. We've seen the physical so far that you and I can see with somebody deceased and what they can see for themselves in that last moment. But what's happening to their soul in the parallel dimension, what we cannot see, is what we'll talk about, inshallah, if we finish that part about the good ending, we'll get into it. Others will go into the, the session after. So two, two more sessions max, and then we'll be talking about the grave, maybe in a session, and then and what happened, where do the souls dwell, and then into the Day of Judgment, the resurrection in the Day of Judgment, inshallah, maybe in a month's time. Okay, final thoughts, questions? Okay. By the way, one final thing. I think you asked the question last time, and I should have elaborated more on like children washing their parents, right? Yes, but remember the other thing that I said, qualification, male, male, female, female. Make sense? So you can wash your father if you're male. You can wash your mother if you're female. But if not, like... Male fee for female, female for male, no. Unless it's a necessity. Nobody else is doing it. Spouse is different. So spouse for a spouse is okay. Husband can wash his wife, wife can wash her husband. Like, right? But pay, child to a parent, no. Right? Because it's just a male, meaning a, a, a male, a boy cannot wash, a son cannot wash his mom's body or sister's body. Unless there's no, there are no other sisters. Sisters should be washing her body, female for female. That should, so it was, does that make sense? So yes, with a qualification. I just wanted to, I remember, I remember that. I said, I should have elaborated a little bit more on it. Okay, got it. All right, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us beautiful endings and to have mercy and rahmah on all those who are deceased, who testified that La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on the martyrs, to have mercy on our brothers and sisters right now who are under oppression in Palestine, in, in Gaza, in Sudan, everywhere where there's, where there's struggle and there's oppression and injustice, ask Allah to strengthen them and grant them patience and sabr, and to have mercy on those among them who were killed for Allah's sake. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this gathering and to uh, shower us with his rahmah, to surround us with his angels and to allow us to grow uh, in our hearts and our souls and to get closer to him. We ask Allah to make us among those who are remembered by him and his angels and to fulfill our needs and to make everything easy on us. We ask Allah to make, e to make it easy on every student right here, to make every test and every um, assignment on you easy and gentle. Bless Allah to make you reach your destination and get your degrees and be able to uh, help the ummah with it. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. Wa salli lahum ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Jazakumullah khair. Inshallah, we'll see you next week. I think we might be soon looking to change the time.
because Maghrib is coming sooner, or, you know, I think it's earlier now. So I don't know how it is next week. I think most likely next week, 6, 6 p.m., but maybe the week after we'll change it, inshallah. So be on the lookout if you're online. We'll send that on the email. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.